Hey guys, this is Billy from adultchilla.com and today I have a very, very exciting project. So what I want to do is teach you guys Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen. Uh, I made an arrangement of the melody and I'd like to just kind of show you how I would go about learning and how I would go about teaching this melody to uh, my adult students. Basically, I was approaching learning songs completely the wrong way for, you know, the first handful of years at least, um, I would just get so excited about playing that I would just try to play the notes and then I would just kind of fight my way through whatever piece I was playing and unknowingly I just kind of built lots and lots of tension in and that's kind of my whole concept for how I teach someone to learn a piece and how I try to learn a piece is to learn it so that I build as little tension in as possible. This is going to be a four part series. We're going to go through the first half of the melody left hand only. Second time video we'll do the second half of the melody and then we'll apply the bow and put the hands together in uh, the third and fourth video. So just so you know this kind of method I'm going to be walking you guys through. This is basically a very kind of condensed version of the way I teach in my course Cello in 30 Days which is kind of my ultimate beginner course to get off to the best start possible. I will be opening up enrollment for that course later in the month. Uh, at the end of a free three-day cello challenge I'll be holding on Facebook. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. That way you don't miss any of the upcoming parts of this little lesson series. So let's get started. We talked about learning without tension. Basically, the way I think that's achieved most effortlessly is to first just separate the hands. It's hard enough to play and get comfortable with the left hand sometimes. And then when you add the right hand in, and the, you know the bow arm it just things can get very complicated very quickly so today we're doing just the left hand and we're gonna build this step by step and I will show you what that means as we get into it the other thing in if I'm talking about like learning without tension one of the things I really want to instill in my students and I try to do myself is that when I'm learning a piece I want to go at a speed where I don't feel surprised by the next note. Today we're going to play it and we're going to go under tempo on purpose because the whole idea, the tension, a lot of it comes from being surprised by the next note and then just, you know, reaching out or, or doing a really quick shift that wasn't prepared. So we want to eliminate all of that. So let's put, we'll put the metronome on. I'm going to put it on 130 for the eighth note. It'll end up being, you know, a very luxurious slow tempo, but I think that's very good for right now. And I have it set so that when you play it's it's kind of in a three four setting so there's a different click for the downbeat and then there's two more clicks so it'll be like click da da click da da so very first thing i do before we even start playing notes i look at the piece as you know if i haven't seen this before and i see right off the bat okay no sharps no flats we're either in probably a minor or c major just so you know we're in c major for this and then i look at the time signature and i see okay six eight Great. That instantly tells me kind of the pulse and, and the feel that I can expect from the music. Okay, so 6-8 means that there's six eighth notes in each bar and that it's grouped into two groups of three. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just kind of nerdy musicianship side note. If this was in 3-4 instead of 6-8, it would be also six eighth notes, but it would be three beats three quarter notes. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. That's if it was in three, four. Today's in six, eight. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So that kind of already gives us our, a, an idea of where, how the piece is going to move, where we're going to feel the important beats. So in six, eight, the important beats that kind of establish the pulse are beat one and beat four. So the first and the fourth eighth note. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now that doesn't mean every important note happens on those pulses, but that's where the pulse is felt. Okay, so we'll probably be a little more emphasis on those notes most of the time. I'm just gonna go ahead and work through the notes. And what I do is I do one bar, then I do two bars, and then I put them together and get that comfortable. So it's gonna be, that's when I talked about step by step. Okay, so we've already eliminated the bow arm and now we're going to go ahead and just learn bars at a time so that it's very very kind of underwhelming <laughs> but not in a bad way 
you just feel very comfortable because there's not too much going on. Fingering wise, in terms of like choice of fingerings, you there are so many ways you could do this. You could do it all in first position for the most part. You could, I just pick the fingerings that I think are logical and that I would naturally do, but I'm not rigidly saying that this is exactly the fingering you need to do. This is just my suggestion, but it's just a suggestion. All right, so let's start with bar five because the first four bars are actually just used as kind of an intro, but the actual melody of the piece starts on bar five, okay? So we're in third position, and it'll be third position with an extension, okay? But just for right now, bar five, we look, it's just a G natural, okay? So you get set up third position, that'd be first finger on G natural, and then, so here's our beat. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. So I'm just gonna, I'll, let's play it together. You can watch me or do it with me. So here's just bar five. One, two, three, here we go. Okay, let's try that again. One, two, three, here we go. Okay, so. If that's a lot already, just keep doing that, listen to the beats. And the trick here, I think, is that in a 6-8 rhythm like this, a standard 6-8 rhythm, I think it's like what we just played was a quarter note followed by an eighth note. I think of the eighth note as kind of falling into or, or like a pickup leading to the next beat. So bum, 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 bum that really helps to establish that lilting rhythm instead of having bum, 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 bum. That, that sounds a little more kind of jagged because the eighth note doesn't, it's not driving to the next beat. Let's go to bar six. So that's gonna be second finger. So I said third position with extension. So you're on the G natural. You, then we go right to an A with second finger. And if we look, we have three eighth notes and then that eighth note is tied to beat four, and then there's a rest. Okay, so, huh. so if we put this, okay, here's bar six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh. Now, when I'm saying uh, <laughs> I'm saying that because that's, I, that's me accounting for the tied note, okay? So, one more time, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now I didn't go on to the very last note of bar six because I'm going to count that as basically like a pickup to bar seven. Okay, so I don't, that, that eighth note, even though that's in bar six, I almost think of that as part of bar seven. And that's what I'm talking about, like those, the eighth notes kind of leading into the next major beat of like the next pulse. Okay, so now let's put those two bars together. So. Fingering wise, we just have first finger and second finger with an extension, so not too bad. Okay, so here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh -huh. Okay, let's do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh -huh. Excellent. So if you're thinking, what else could I be thinking when you're doing this? One thing is just because it's an extension, this would be a great time to practice kind of opening your hand comfortably, landing right in rhythm, but, but doing so so that it's, it feels like it's hinging open, it's really comfortable. Let's move on. Okay, so bar seven, and I'm gonna include the pickup. Bar seven, if we take a look, again, it's, you know, it's a different rhythm, but again, we're playing just that G natural again. So we'll be on first finger. Now, we played an extension in third position because that at the end of bar six, I have that E natural, and I'm gonna play that on the G string with my fourth finger. So that's why I picked this position is I don't, I didn't wanna be shifting around. So let's go ahead, we're gonna play bar seven. So here's our rhythm, and if we look at it again, we have total six eighth notes, but the two middle notes of beats three and four are tied. So I'm gonna make my little uh sound just to kind of get, account for that 
tide bar, or sorry, that tide beat, okay? So now, I'll count, to, I'll start at counting bar six, and then when I get to the six, we're gonna play the pickup of bar seven. Okay, if that's confusing, we'll do it, I'll just do it once and show you what I'm talking about. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Uh. Okay, so that was the pickup to bar seven and all of bar seven. Try that again. One, two, three, four, five. Uh. Okay, one more time. One, two, three, four, five. Uh. Excellent. Great. Okay, so. Now, bar seven, if we look at it, we have a quarter note, an eighth note, so that's that standard six eight kind of lilting rhythmic pattern, and then we have three eighth notes in four, five, and six. Okay, so let's just take a look at bar seven. So start second finger in extension, so second finger on A. So here's bar eight. One, two, three, four, five, C. Okay, let's try that again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. Okay, now let's put parts seven and eight together. Okay, I'm doing this again in a sped up version. So if any of this feels like, whoa, we're going fast, you just repeat it and you can slow it. I put the metronome at 130, you can put it at 120, 110. Again, the biggest thing is you don't want to be surprised by the next note. So if this is moving too fast, slow it down and get it at that tempo where it feels very comfortable. You're, you're like prepared for the next thing coming, okay? So we're at the third position extension. We're going to do the pick up to seven. Okay, so I'll count one through five. When we get to six, that's the pick up to seven. And then we're playing seven and eight. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. So I forgot to do the uh, so <laughs> I hope you didn't miss it. I'll do it this time one more time. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Uh. Okay, so now we've done six and seven, or seven and eight rather, okay? So now at this point, we've done five and six and we've done seven and eight. So this would be a point, and again, <laughs> we're moving at kind of hyperspeed depending on you know, where you are in your journey, but this would be a great time to say, okay, let's now, we've put two and two together. Now let's see like a quilt maybe, you can kind of splice these two pieces together that are comfortable and see if we can get five, six, seven, and eight, okay? So I'm gonna turn on the metronome, and five, if you look at the sheet music, we didn't play it to get started, but if you notice, bar four, there's a pick up to five. The last beat of bar four is a pick up to bar five, the pick up to the melody. So we're gonna include that, All right? So I'm gonna count to five, and then we'll do the pick up to bar five, and do five, six, seven, eight. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. How'd that feel? Okay, I hope it felt pretty good. If there are parts, like some of that felt really good, some of it didn't feel really really good, do the opposite of what I used to do back way back in the start of my journey and actually focus on the parts that didn't feel really good instead of kind of, oh yeah, that was awkward anyway, keep going. So you wanna get everything smooth as butter. For me, in this kind of a learning scenario, where that would often happen is maybe I get two bars really comfortable and two bars, and then maybe it's that link between the, the pairs of bars. Maybe that link I haven't really accounted for yet, and so that might cause a problem. So then I would take, if this is you know one, two, three, four, the bars I'm working on, I would just work on two to three and getting those two very comfortable so that everything is you know comfortable in the moment and then you're ready and prepared for what's coming up. 
All right, let's try, try that one more time, then we'll move on. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so hopefully that feels pretty good. Let's move right along. So now we're going to look at bars 9 and 10, see what's going on there. So if you look at bar 9, not too bad. We're again in that extended third position, so we'll just be on second finger, but we have kind of an interesting syncopated feel, and this is something that you want to notice and kind of practice on its own because it can get a little awkward if you're used to da 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 that kind of quarter followed by the eighth and then nine is da 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 so in bar nine we actually have the eighth note first and then the quarter note okay and then there's going to be a tie <laughs> into beat four so that's further syncopating so we're not actually going to strike the the pulsed beat of four so this whole bar is kind of syncopated a little bit so it's ba 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 is what it's going to feel like okay so second finger on a here we go so just bar nine one two three four five six huh. okay let's try that again here we go one two three four five six Okay, so a little awkward, but uh, comfortable if you're ready for it. <laughs> All right, and then bar 10 is our, you know, it's going to involve like our first shift. We're going to go back to first position. So you're going to play second finger on that A natural in bar 10. And now we're back to having a quarter note on the pulse beat and then an eighth note. So you'll play that second finger and then earlier than you might feel comfortable, depending on how your shifting feels you go ahead set up in fourth finger to play the G natural so that you'll be ready in first position for the rest of the bar. And then you just have, you, so you have a quarter note and then you just have four eighth notes in uh, first position to follow, okay? So let's take a look at bar 10. All right, so here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So now, just to give you another little thing to think about, we're going to be second finger on the A string, and I'm going to say go at a certain time, and that's going to tell you to start shifting. To make sure you don't shift too late, okay? So here we go. One more time, bar 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, go. Okay, so it's, it's, it's not the instant you play the, the A natural with the second finger, but it's earlier than you might think. You you get shifting quickly, okay? So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, go. It's like one of the biggest tricks to shifting that I learned eventually was uh, so much of it is the timing. I thought that meant, you know, of course it means something for the bow arm, but it also means something for the left hand. And often the, the problem I had, I was trying to hold the full value of the notes I was playing at all times and then you end up basically always like slamming into the next note because you didn't leave early enough to, you didn't account for the traveling time of the shift. All right, so let's do bars nine and 10 together. Here we go. So bar nine, remember we start with that syncopation. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it's a little, little gnarly compared to like bar five, for example, but let's try it again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh. Go. Excellent. Okay, and now just for fun, we're gonna go ahead and add bar 11 because if you look, it's, it's not that much. It's again, a syncopated sy scenario where you have the eighth note on the pulse speed followed by a quarter note and then that's tied into basically the rest of the bar, okay? 
So let's just do 9 and 10, and we'll just sneak in 11 right now so that we don't have to, you know, just spend a whole bunch of time on a bar that isn't that complicated. All right, so here's bar 9, 10, and 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's try that again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, go. Good. Okay, so that that's a, a little gnarly because of the syncopation. So that would be a section maybe, I'm just guessing if that's not as comfortable right away, for the left hand, and again, so far we basically, except for the the very end where we go into first uh, first position, we've basically played two notes, a G natural and an A natural for the majority of this melody. So it's not necessarily the left hand notes that are difficult, but part of left hand comfort is, you know, dropping your fingers at the right time and, and being ready for the rhythm. Okay, so like, you know, so if suddenly you get a syncopated thing and it's like, okay, the notes aren't that much harder, Technically, in terms of like where they are on the fingerboard, I've been playing them for two bars already, but now the rhythm's weird, and so that's also what we're taking care of with this left hand, left hand only right now. All right, so now, because we're doing the condensed sped up version, let's go ahead and we're gonna do pick up to bar five and then all of five all the way through all of 11. Okay, so this whole first part of this melody. All right, so here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Let's try that again. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Mm. Mm. Go. Okay, great. So, just to sum up what we did there is we piece by piece, bar at a time, and then pairs of bars, and then take two pairs, you splice those together, do the same thing, and then suddenly you have an eight bar phrase, but you've really touched each bar pretty equally in the sense that each bar got individual treatment, and then each bar got paired up with another bar, and they, that got some treatment. So it wasn't like you just kind of always play the start of a phrase and then there's issues and so you kind of never get to the second part of the phrase you kind of just keep playing the stuff you that's comfortable and then keep getting tripped up by the uncomfortable part all right so that's kind of the the methodology i developed for myself and for my students all right so now to finish up we're going to go ahead and just do the next kind of four bars and then we'll that should be enough for today and we'll i'll see you next time for the second part of this whole melody all right so Looking at bar 12, uh, it's basically an empty bar score. And then we have one single lonely eighth note, uh, beat six. So again, you can assume that's basically gonna act as a pickup for bar 13, okay? So let's just learn 13 and then we'll add the pickup after. So again, I'm gonna be in third position with an extension, playing that G natural again. Um, and if we look, we have once again just uh, the standard kind of 6-8 rhythm of a quarter note and then an eighth note that happens twice and it's all on G. So that bar is not too bad. Here we go. So just just bar 13. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> That's it. All right, let's do it again. Ready? One, two, three, here we go. Great. And if you did the pickup, it would be one, two, three, four, five. And then we're set. So then 
uh, bar 14, we have this, again, the rhythm is the same as bar 13, we just have some different notes. So bar 14, we have quarter note and eighth note of A natural, and then we have quarter note of B natural, and then we're gonna shift back to fourth finger for the G natural, and so we're again shifting back into first position in the, the second part of bar 14. And so I'll say go just to kind of help with the timing of that shift, okay? So here's 14. One, two, three, four, five, six, go. Okay, let's do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, go. Okay, so you really want to leave as early as possible without disturbing the music. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, go. Good. Okay, now 13 and 14 together with the pickup. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Go. Good. One more time. One, two, three, four, five. Go. Good. Okay, so two more bars and then we're done for today. So bar 15, you're looking at it and we have the three eighth notes. Okay, and then that's gonna be tied to a quarter note. So you can give yourself a little uh on beat four just to kind of keep the time without, you know, you won't be playing a note, but you can kind of mark the time with your voice. Uh, just don't do that at the end of the whole thing when you're playing this with a pianist or with a friend or for a friend by yourself, you know, uh, you know, you don't have to do those, but it's a, it's a good way to practice keeping, internalizing the rhythm rather. And then, so we have that, and then we have, again, in 15, we have that kind of pickup beat, which is beat six, and that's an open A string and then it goes right back to second finger on C natural. So this, this whole melody kind of shows you how beautiful a simple melody can be. I mean, Beethoven's Ode to Joy is one of the best examples of that, that you can learn the, the theme to pretty quickly. And it's just, you know, the span of maybe a perfect fifth or pretty much a perfect fifth. And it's just immortal how beautiful it is. But yeah, we've played the same notes over and over in this, but this song is wonderful. All right, so here's 15. So A string, second finger. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh. And that's the pickup. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh. Okay. And then now for bar 16, that's we're gonna stop there. And so I'm not even gonna address the, the pickup note, that beat five, you have an eighth note rest, and then beat six is again that C natural, but that I'm just gonna treat that as part of 17 next time, okay? So we're just gonna finish up with the, basically the first five beats of bar 16. And so we have, again, first position, we have two C naturals, and then a D natural with the fourth finger, and that's held over. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, let's do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Excellent, okay? So, now, let's put 15 and 16 together. Here we go. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh. Great. Now let's put 13 through 16 together with the pickup to 13. So it's that open G string on the, the end of bar 12. So I'll count the first part of bar 12. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent. OK, 
okay? Already you can, even at this slower tempo, the Cohen's melody is starting to come to life a little bit when you s string these bars together, which is very fun. Okay, here we go. One more time. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now, let's just have a lot of fun here, and we're just going to try this. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but let's try it. We're going to do the pick up to bar 5 where we started today, and then all the way through 16. Just try it once, and if, if it happens to not work, which happens, then the, the point of this is to see kind of like a railroad track. You're like, where's the break in the tracks? We don't have to repair the entire railroad line we just have to find the break in the tracks and we'll know okay this is not comfortable yet so it's a good thing to test after you've done some work all right so let's go ahead all right pick up to bar five one two three four five So there's kind of a very condensed version of how I would approach learning a melody like this. So that basically you never encounter situations where there's a hard section and then you just keep trying it over and over again, especially with both hands. And then you're just kind of working a memory of tension and struggle into a melody. Okay, so this should have been pretty comfortable. If it wasn't, slow down the metronome, try it as many times as you want. But I would highly suggest going about it in this manner. I will see you next week for part two.